Hello everyone and welcome back to Average Guy Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing the GP Toys F2 Black Aviax Edition. Um, this is a special edition quad. I don't know how long it's released for. I don't know if it's a limited run. Um, it just says special edition everywhere I've seen it. Um, and I picked this one up because of the modifications I was making on the H2O Aviax. I wanted to have something as a backup. I really liked the way that thing flew, so I picked this one up. I really thought it was going to be the same. But there's quite a few differences with it. First, it comes with a camera. It's a 2 megapixel camera and it is just about as good as the uh, Sima X5C. Uh, go ahead and take a look at this video real quick. the video as you can see just a little bit of jello in it um, I had crashed it pretty hard a few times in fact uh, this blade right here got bent um, and I just kind of straightened it right back out but it took a pretty hard fall from about 20 or 30 feet um, but still very good picture and uh, it goes pretty high and it's really controllable even in the wind uh, it's a little unstable when you do really fast maneuvers and when you put this thing in rate 3 it is almost a toy racing quad. Now, I'm not going to say a racing quad because those things are a lot faster, but in the toy world, this thing is actually really, really fast. Um, but overall, probably one of my favorite toy quads that I have. Let's go ahead and jump into what comes in the box. First thing you're going to pull out of there, and I love this about this quad, is two batteries. You get two 650 milliamp, 3.7 volt, 25C lithium polymer batteries. So each one of these is good for about 10 to 12 minutes of flight time with no camera, uh, 8 to 10 minutes with uh, recording, but that gives you 20 minutes in the air and you're talking about a 45 minute charge time if you charge them by themselves. Uh, also, when you get it in the box, there's going to be no propellers on it, but you will have eight propellers that come in the box, so one complete set and one extra set of four. Um, what you're going to have in the prop shaft when you pull it out of the box is this cotter pin. I don't know if you can see that there, but hold on to this cotter pin. Now everybody thinks that you just go ahead and put the cotter pin on the prop and that's what holds it on there. Don't do that. <laughs> the cotter pins are really cheap and flimsy and they'll fall out. There's screws in the bag that go into that hole that the cotter pin's in. Uh, go ahead and put those screws in with the supplied screwdriver. Uh, it is a magnetic tip screwdriver and it is not very hard to get those screws in and they do hold the props on a lot better, especially in a crash. You're also gonna get a USB charger. It's just your standard USB charger for the what is pretty much a standard lithium polymer battery. You can pick up extras on Amazon in five packs for less than 20 bucks with a six, point, six port charger most of the time. Um, last thing you're gonna get in the box short of the controller is going to be a uh, micro SD to USB conversion so this thing right here pulls off and you stick your micro SD card right there in the back the last thing you're gonna get in the box just like the Sima X11 is a Xbox 360 style controller uh, it even says AVX F2 on the top of it um, one thing I really do like about this controller is it is very well labeled as you can see here every button has a label so I know which every what every one of them does now these over here are not labeled these are just your trims um, up, down, well I'd be forward, backward, side to side. And then this middle button here controls your lights. The lights on the underside of the quad are able to be turned off if you want to save that battery life. Um, I fly using the lights so mine are always on. Um, power button here and indicator lights to let you know if you are taking a photo or a video. Um, it also has headless mode and auto return. Auto return doesn't really work real well. Um, it's it's one of those toy quad features. It's really a novelty. Don't trust it. Try not to use it. Um, and then headless mode does work pretty well. Um, I never fly in headless mode, so that's not going to be in the flight video. 
But uh, up here you have two bumpers, one controls your flips, so just press that and then indicate on this stick which direction you'd like it to flip, and press this to change your speeds. You have three rates of speed, low, medium, and high. The controller takes four AAA batteries, um, and I've noticed that it's really good for about that 250 to 300 foot mark. Uh, I really wouldn't push it past that. If you do push it past that, it does do an auto shutdown and it just falls out of the sky. Uh, now, it is a tough quad. It's taken quite a few crashes. I've probably flown this thing close to 15 to 20 times, but let's go ahead and take a closer look at the quad here. Now, this thing here is just a very solid quadcopter. Size-wise, it's on par, maybe a little bit bigger than the Sima X5C. Um, it's definitely a lot faster than the Sima X5C, and uh, I think it has a higher climb rate than the X5C. But as we flip it around, we'll see there is nothing but a lot of similarities when it comes to this and the X5C. So, camera right here, one nice thing about the camera is it is adjustable, so you can tilt it down or up if you'd like to fly with it up. I always tend to fly with it up. If you tilt it down, you really just spend the whole time looking at the ground. It plugs in here just like the Simas do, and the battery compartment just like the Simas, and the H2O AVX just slides back and lifts up. Now with the camera on, it doesn't really lift up that high. It kind of stops right here, which makes getting batteries in a little bit complicated, but still possible. No on or off switch, so as soon as you plug the battery in, the quad turns on, the lights light up, you have red in the front, green in the back, backwards as always, and um, there is no need to arm the quadcopter. It is ready to go as soon as you bind it. So as soon as you turn the controller on, if you press up on the throttle, the quadcopter will take off. All right, so I'm gonna have plugged it into you. I'm gonna show you a couple of things real quick about this. As you can see, nice and bright LED lights there on the bottom. There's uh, 200 watts of light hitting this thing on either side. So as you can see, you can still see them. Um, to bind the quadcopter, like I said, simply turn it on and it binds up right away. Lights stop flashing and if you hit the throttle up, the propellers will start to spin. Now, to adjust the gyros on it or calibrate the gyros, we're just going to pull these sticks down and to the outside. Controller will beep, lights will flash, and they are adjusted. Now, like I said, there is no need to bind the quadcopter. In fact, it's ready to go right off the bat. So this thing does take off rather quickly, so be careful on the throttle as you're leaving the ground, and it does have quite a bit of ground effect on it. Um, it's putting out a lot of air, and it's quite light. As you can see up here, uh, it does have this fake GPS antenna up here. It blinks from blue to red for no apparent reason. Other than show, and there is a blue light down here on the bottom of the camera that turns red when taking video. It blinks, and when taking a photo, it turns red to let you know that it took a photo. So, other than that, no other really big features to talk about with this. Um, highly recommend this quad. If you're looking for something, I picked this up on Amazon for around $20. That was on sale. It's back up to about $36, but still completely worth the $36. So let's go ahead and jump into that flight video and take a look at what it can do. Bye. 